Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CVP Nerds video series on C++ and in this video we will be looking into this destructor in C++. So before this we saw what is constructor, now this is destructor. So the job of constructor was it was creating the object and the job of the destructor is it will destroy the object when your object scope is over or your program is going to get terminated. Okay. So for that we need some class. So let's create some class here. Class base and here integer x and this is gonna be a default constructor. This is let's make it a parameterized constructor and then this destructor. So this is how you create destructor. You need to use this symbol and your function name should be the class name and this is your destructor ready. Now whatever you want to do this inside this will happen when your object is going to get destroyed. So I want to just print that destructors. So let's read these points. It will be really more clear. So this is a special member function with same name as class with this at the front. So we saw that here and this is also a special member function. It cannot change. So if your class name is base, you will have to write base here and use this symbol and then it will become destructor. So special member functions are having the similar name what class name is. Now it will be very easy for you to remember this. So let's look at this second point. Used to destruct the memory of object which was constructed by the constructor. Okay. So this point can be made here. Base B and maybe that's it. So if you are having this B, it will call this constructor. So this is your default constructor and this is your parameterized constructor. So as I said, when you are creating the object, it will call the constructors. And in this case, it will call this constructor. This is a default constructor. You have seen the construction process in the previous video, so I won't go over that much. But when your main function is getting terminated, in another word, it is terminating the whole program. In that case, before terminating the program, your destructor will be called. And destructor will destroy this one. The destroy thing I will not write here because it actually happens automatically in case of normal data members. When you have used integer pointer here, in that case, you have to delete that pointer here. But as you have not seen pointer data members yet, it will be hard to relate it for you but still I will try to give you the example so before going for that let's just compile this and check uh oh yeah I always forget this public thing here deconstructor and then destructor so deconstructor means default constructor okay so first it was constructed and when your program was terminating it automatically called this destructor you don't have to call this correct now let's look at where the actual use of this is. So for that, let's use this integer pointer here. And you might remember that when you was using integer pointer p is equal to new integer here. And later after this, you would have to delete this p here. Okay. Because you have created this memory because you created the pointer. So you have to delete that pointer so that memory leak will not happen. So the similar case will happen here as well. If you are creating the pointer, you have to give the memory for that. So this is how you will create these functions. I won't go much into the deep inside, just simple things. This will become pointer and that's it. Now you will delete this X and done. And now if you are creating this B, the thing will look like this integer this 10 so here what you're doing is you're creating this b object and passing the address what is returned after this new expression so this new keyword is used to create the dynamic memory allocation so if you don't know this you will find this tutorial a little difficult for you to understand so for that you please go and watch what does this new and delete operator do and for those people who know this, let's continue. So as you know, new will ask the memory of size integer and it will initialize 10 inside that and 
ultimately you will have some address at this point and that address is going here and that address type is integer so we are taking that as integer pointer and initializing that inside this x so this x is now holding the address not the value okay so if this is not pointer it would be holding the value but as this is pointer we are passing the address and we are initializing that dynamically created address here I mean to x so as you remember as I told you that if you are creating any integer pointer or something if you are creating any pointer you have to delete that pointer so in this case also you have to delete that and that delete will happen inside this destructor so you are deleting that okay so let's compile this one and check see now p constructor was called because you are calling this with parameterize one because now you are passing the parameters here so this one will be called that's why we got this p constructor which is parameterized constructor after everything is done you are terminating and when you are about to terminate before that you will call this destructor which will delete this b and now you will write whatever you want to write like delete x let's suppose if you are having another pointer let's make it y then you will delete x and y both okay so this is generally the case with the destructor you delete the dynamically created memory otherwise there is no need to create this destructor your compiler will take care of that okay and I mean to say is if you are not using this pointer then it will be simply integer x then you don't have to initialize it with the null pointer and yeah that null pointer is nothing but a null null means not pointing to anything okay so here also it will be simple pointer and then you won't delete this and you will have only 10 here as you didn't create a pointer your compiler will take care of everything I mean the destruction part because compiler will create the memory for this one but as soon as you started taking the pointers in your data members you'll have to worry about the deleting portion okay so for that we use destructor and if you really don't understood what do I mean by integer pointer or what is actual use of pointer data member I have a pointer data member video in this series you can go and check that or maybe if I have not given the link in the description field you asked me for that if I forgot so we were discussing about this second point now the third point is destructors get called automatically it is an implicit call as the constructor was okay because you was not calling this constructor here okay you were just creating the object and it was automatically get called so similarly when you are going after this main and there is a time to destroy this so this destructor is also being called automatically okay so that is the third point we can call destructors explicitly but that is not a good practice and the only place where you will call destructors explicitly is after placement new and this is a little advanced topic which I think I will cover in some another video fourth can be seen here so if you want to call this destructor you can just simply call like this done if you just compile it you will have two time destructor first is when you are calling this one and another time when your program is getting terminated your program doesn't know that you called it so it will call it again because calling constructor is not your job I mean calling destructor is not your job so compiler doesn't have any idea about that so compiler will again call the destructor and two time destructor call is undefined undefined means what will happen they don't know if something bad have happened you cannot claim the C++ developers I mean the committee because it's your mistake you're doing this and there is one extra point here this destructor doesn't have any parameter okay you cannot just call like 11 here and get integer a something like this here no if you will compile this you will get the error okay saying that maybe there is no matching function and it is telling that destructors may not have parameters so you cannot have the parameters in the destructor whereas you can have in the constructor 
So this was all about the destructor. Actually not all about because when things go for exception handling, there are few things we need to really take care in case of destructors. So that we will see in exception handling tutorials. So for now, let's keep it this much. And to summarize this, destructor is a special member function which is having the similar name what your class name is and with this tilde symbol and as you was not calling constructor so you don't have to call the destructor also and destructor job is to destroy the object what you created here and this destruction happens automatically you don't have to write any destructor until unless you have used pointer data member okay and that thing you can check out my another video or maybe you will get the link in the description field if i forgot to include that link because i generally do because i don't really remember what did i said in the video so it's your job to ask for that link and that is a really very big video so be prepared for that so yeah you might be thinking that if i'm not using any pointer still i'm writing this and i'm telling that there is no need to write yes there is no need to write but if you are writing then it's okay because you're not doing anything here right you're just simply doing some printf statement which is okay but it becomes really necessary when you have some pointers here because you have to delete that pointer and that delete will happen here in the destructor. So that's the whole idea about this destructor here. I hope you would have liked this video and if you did like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification for new videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.